Well, welcome everybody. My name is Sharon Patterson. I have a company called EcoEdge. We are a proprietary school in the state of Idaho, as well as a green building and sustainability consulting firm. And we've decided to launch and be the provider of the Sustainable Building Advisor course here in Idaho. Uh, the course was developed 10 years ago in Seattle, just celebrated its 10th anniversary last Thursday. Is that right? Uh, it's now in 20 locations around North America. And I'm not gonna say too much about the program. Um, that's not my real, really my role here tonight. Um, the first thing I do want to do is uh, introduce everybody around the room, just so everyone has a sense of who's here. Um, so I'll start with John here. Just name and kind of a, a one sentence about what you do in your background. We are videotaping this for anybody that is not able to be here tonight and wants to, to watch this. Um, so if anybody's not here and wants to see it, it's going to be posted on idlboise.com. Uh, and we're going to try to post it as well on buildingecoedge.com. So that's where it'll be available with that. Tristan? Uh, my name is Tristan Vance. Like, uh, I got my degree in architecture, and I work here at the Integrated Design Lab. Wes Harrison. I'm getting my degree this year at Boise State Construction Management. I'm still learning how the game show microphone works. Oh. I don't know how close I need to get. Uh, okay. Paul Haas, construction management student. Kathy O'Neill, sustainable design interest. Uh, my name is Scott Larson. I teach residential home building for the Boise School District. I'm Maisie Cottrell. I work for Johnson Architects for Meridian. Ken Baker, K Energy, and I, I represent Better Bricks Education and Training. Uh, Troy Baker, I'm actually in town visiting Ken from Nebraska, just kind of getting a quick course on green systems here. So I don't know much about it in our state, so I thought I'd come here since it seems to be in place already. So he came the longest way to get the yeah. award for coming the far, <laughs> farther. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm Jerry Royster. I'm with the uh, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I am our energy coordinator over there. I'm Gary Haynes. I have a background in housing and community development. Um, and I'll also mention for Gary and Jerry that they both work uh, in founding the Healthy Homes Network here in Idaho. So anybody wants to find out about that? I'm Danielle, and I'm with Kiefer Design Group, an interior design firm here in town. I'm Nathan Miller. I'm a construction management student as well. So we've got a few construction management students interested. And I'm going to wrap up over here, and I'll make the introduction if that's OK. Uh, this is Kim Hughes, and she's education and training for Better Bricks, which is the commercial division of the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance. Um, and I'm going to ask Kim to come up and say a few words if that's OK. Um, like I said, this program started 10 years ago uh, in Seattle. And Kim was the one that took it to the first city outside of Seattle. She developed the program for Portland. Um, now it's in 20 cities, as I mentioned, and we're bringing it to Idaho. With that, I'll turn it over. All right. Hello. Well, this is really exciting that it's coming to Boise. I'm happy about that. Um, as you mentioned, I'm with the NIA, the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance, and we're a nonprofit um, funded by electric utilities in the Northwest, and we work on um, helping to adopt sustained energy efficiency products, um, practices, and technologies in the Northwest. And we work with our stakeholders and with um, strategic market partners to do that in the areas of um, commercial buildings, industrial, and residential. So how many of you have heard of NIA, Northwest Energy? OK. So I'm here wearing about, I'm wearing four different hats, actually. Um, NIA and Better Bricks, the commercial sector, is a sponsor of this program. We've been, we've been a sponsor for about five years. Um, so I'm here to help, you know, promote and support the program and answer questions that people might have about it. Um, I'm also a board member of the National Sustainable Building Advisor Program, and so I have that perspective as well. And then I'm a lead instructor. I've um, been teaching, um, doing what these folks are going to be doing uh, in Portland for the last five years, and I'm a graduate and a certified sustainable building advisor. So um, this is really a unique program. You're going to hear a lot about it here in just a few minutes. And I'm here to help support and answer questions that might come up about it. So, yeah. okay. 
Um, and with that, I'll introduce our lead instructor for the course, M. Alvitas, and she's been teaching this course in Bend, Oregon for the last three years. So we're bringing her experience over to Idaho. And before I uh, turn the microphone over to you, I'm just going to mention a thank you to Nia and to Better Bricks for being a, a founding sponsor of our program here, launching this course. And I also want to recognize that Idaho Power has signed on as a sponsor also. Um, so it's nice to have support from both of those organizations. With that, Great. ML. Thanks, Sharon. Um, we'll wait. There we go. We should have image. Yes. Well, welcome to the info session for the Sustainable Building Advisor Program. I got to hear a little of your backgrounds. Was anyone at the info session that we held in August? Okay, a couple of people. You'll hear some things that I mentioned then, and um, a little bit of new stuff, but most of it's the same. So bear with me on that part. Uh, what I found in, in doing these info sessions and in running the program, it's a big decision to decide to enroll in this class. And what I would like to do tonight is give you as much information as I can so you can make a good decision for yourself. So if I mention something and it doesn't make sense, or you want some clarification, just interrupt, because if we're a small group, and if I can't answer it, I'm sure Kim can, can offer a perspective on it too. So don't hesitate to interrupt me. It's fun for me that Kim is here because she ran the class for the first time in Bend, Oregon, which is where I'm from, and I took the class when she was running it, and then she handed it over to me, and I've been running it since then. So it's, I'm really pleased that you're here, Kim. And I also wanted to say a thank you to IDL for the space that we're using tonight, in addition to the other thank yous. So my background, I'm Mary Louise Vitas. I go by my initials ML. And I've been involved with sustainability in one way or another for a long time. The bottom item here in North Carolina, passive solar home, the, the house that I grew up in is passive solar. In fact, I didn't know we had air conditioning. <laughs> I asked my dad um, a couple of years ago and he said, yeah, your mom just didn't like it because it made too much noise. But the house was well designed. It was um, built into the hillside. It really functioned well in a hot, humid climate like North Carolina. That's more of a, that's one way you can get into sustainability as you experience it. This, this program is much broader than that and, and you'll see as I talk more about it. My background is design, I have a master's in architecture, and prior to that I actually was a studio artist. So I really think more in the design side, but my dad is uh, trained as an electrical engineer, so I have that aesthetic side and the, the engineering, let's make it work, let's make sure it, you know, do it by the numbers side too. And I respect that, I, that's what I love about architecture, it's really the marrying of both. And I think sustainability really works best when it performs energy-wise and it's a pleasing, satisfying built space. So that's my background. I, the house picture there is my home. I designed it and we, we went through the lead process and actually attained lead platinum. And it is quite a joy to live in a place that you've designed and it really works. It's in, like right now, the shoulder months where we're getting cold evenings and, and hot days. I open up my south facing, open up the shades on the south side of the house, let it get really warm, and, and it works. It's, it's really fun. So you can ask me about that too. Okay, I know a lot of people that have been laid off recently. It's a, and we're hearing stuff about the economy, global warming, all this bad stuff. How, what can you do? Well, amazingly, I think this class actually actually can help you out. These are statistics on, on where I've come from. Um, we're not doing too well economically right now, but the people that, it, that have taken the class actually are doing better than other um, people in the building trades that I've spoken with. So recession. I think when you hit hard economic times, whether it's at a community level or it's personally, you've got two different ways you can respond. You can cry, oh, the sky is falling, sky is falling, or bury your head in the sand, you know, just deny it, or you can do something about it. And I encourage you, whether you take the class or not, 
to look at what you can do to get yourself prepared for new jobs and the new green economy. Because I think that in five years, if you're in the building industry and you're not doing something related to green, you're going to be on your way out of business. Because I, I really see the world shifting that way. This class can provide that kind of foundation for you. So how do you get there? Well, there's training, there's getting that knowledge, the information. And with the internet, a lot of that information is out there. But you need more than that. You need to understand it. And, and having connections with people that can be a resource for you. And that's part of what this program provides in a very special way. So what is this, the Sustainable Building Advisor course? They used way too many syllables when they decided to name this class. <laughs> it's a, a mouthful. But this is a good summary of it. It's a nine-month comprehensive training course specifically designed for working professionals eager to, eager to apply sustainable concepts to the building, buildings they design, develop, and construct. And I would add the, the buildings that they maintain. Facilities managers are, fit right into this as well. Steve is a contractor builder in the Bend area that took the class last year. And um, he's an older gentleman, been doing construction for a long time. And, and, and to hear him say this about the class and how it impacted him. I feel more prepared to provide building solutions that make good long-term and short-term sense. And as a builder, he needs to be able to convince his clients. He needs to be able to explain to them what's, why do it this way. As, um, as was mentioned, the class is not just locally. It's a national program. It's currently offered in all of these locations. I think there's a few more that have been added that aren't actually on this slide. And there's a couple of advantages to that. Um, one is if, for instance, you're enrolled in the class and you, you can't attend a, a specific class time period, let me know or let Sharon know and, and she can let me know and we'll see if we can find a class that's happening in another, uh, particularly in the Northwest, and maybe you can sit in on another class. But also, this network that will be developed locally among the people that take the class and the people that present to the class, it's a national network that you are able to tie into. And that brings me right to community. You have here in Boise a really amazing, sustainable community. I've, it's been fun for me to start to see what's happening in Boise, and, and it's great. You're already doing a lot of good stuff. The, this particular course will enhance that and actually help people be more connected. There's a, just by the nature of the way the class is formatted, which I'll describe in a few minutes. And it is, it is that, um, that intention that this community, you are able to articulate to people that might not understand sustainability and the green principles. Dan Hill is an architect actually based in Eugene he took the class in, in Bend, which is a, a two and a half hour drive in the summer on dry roads. It's more like a three and a half hour drive in the winter when, the, when there's snow in the pass. He came, took the class over in Bend, and his, what he says about that, that the knowledge learned in this class will establish a new foundation for our firm's second 25 years of business, that's pretty profound. He's been doing this for a long time as an architect and as a builder and saw great value in the class. So course content, we also have a, at the back as you go out, if you want to take a copy of it, it's an outline of the class. We basically cover construction through the whole process from, from looking at it at a big bird's eye view down to the building envelope to construction practices. So there's nine units, we spread it out over nine months. 
So you, the first class is very broad. What is green? How do you, how, what is sustainable? What makes something sustainable? How do you know when it's not sustainable? How do you um, challenge somebody in terms of what is green? And simultaneous with that, we'll be talking about site and regional issues. So we're, we're looking at it from this really broad view with, with site, site assessment, transportation, regional issues, planning issues. And then we begin to narrow down to the bu building scale. And we'll look at, at site in terms of a specific site and, and a building and how you can take advantage of things that are existing on your site with energy, lighting, daylighting, wind is another one. And then into green materials and getting further into the building, it's indoor air quality, it's also acoustics, it's lighting, how does that impact people's health? It's all, all of those issues coming together and how do you assess it? And then we go back out toward the site with, with water issues, both indoor water and site water issues, storm water, which I know in a climate like this can be a big issue. We, we in Bend have it as it's pretty severe. Our, our precipitation comes in the winter as snow and then, and then major storm events. So it, we're not like the Willamette Valley and, and the Portland area that get inundated with rain. We get it in a different way. And job site operations with construction practices and waste manage, construction waste management, and then building operations and maintenance, which is commissioning and looking at the energy performance after a, a building is, is completed. So those are the basic topics that are covered. I said nine, but it ends up being eight spread out over nine, because you do a team project presentation. Jason is a, a designer, uh, residential mostly. I'm not sure if he's done any commercial projects. But this perspective that he gives here, how the class filled the gaps, a lot of us come at sustainability and green from varied backgrounds. We've got this little bit of expertise, or we hear about something, and we, we start delving into it. We understand that. But we often don't have this comprehensive broad base. So you get this piece, but then you're not actually taking advantage of what you know from this other point of view. The class does fill the gaps. So what is a sustainable building advisor? Kim mentioned that she's a certified sustainable building advisor. I am too. It's a nice little extra set of letters you get to put on your business card, CSBA. But what does it mean? Well, in my experience and with running the class in Bend and watching people go through the program, this is what you end up with. Person who is articulate and knowledgeable. You have the information, but you also know how to talk about it. You know how to express it and explain it to people. Capable of assessing new technology and systems. Okay, so you take a workshop on insulation. And now you know all about insulation. It's a half-day workshop, an all-day workshop. You are an expert on insulation now. But what happens three years from now when there's a new product on the market? Is that going to be better than what you were taught three years ago? Or is it, you know, how do you know? With what, the way this class is formatted and the information you're getting and the access to the, the expert instructors, you're going to know how to ask the tough questions. You're going to know how to assess is this really green? Is this green because someone says it's green? Is it green because of its energy performance? What about embodied energy? What about where it came from? What about what you do with it when you're done with it? And is it going to, go into a landfill? Those are the kind of things that you will be able to ask whether you're an expert or not. You'll know the kind of questions to ask. And then the third point is connected to local and regional resources. I don't teach this class. I just bring in experts for each topic area, and they teach it. And generally, I, I think I could say 100% of the time, um, those experts are people that are working in the field right now. So they're not teaching from a textbook that, want, you know, when you publish a textbook, it's already out of date. Because <laughs> it, it went through all those editors and, and then through the publisher. You're going to get current information on what works now, and you're going to get their experience, and you're going to be in the room with them, and you can ask them questions. 
So you will be connected to local and regional resources. The format, like I mentioned, regional guest instructors. Um, I actually am pretty excited. I've already got commitment for the instructors for the October, November, December class and March for here in Boise. Paladino and company are a green building cons consulting service out of Seattle. They've been doing it for decades and they'll be doing the first session here in Boise. And they, they are very good at giving you that broad view of what is green and how do you get a group of people, you got a team, they're, they're coming to, to a meeting on your project, how do you get them to really think about green and work collaboratively? <coughs> so that's, what I, that's who's coming in October. And we've got Peter Hurley out of Portland. He's a transportation and regional planning expert. And he, he changed my way of thinking about stuff. He asked you to, you don't have to tell the whole class, but he's, at, he's gonna send a questionnaire where he's asking you, how do you get to work? How do you, how are, what are other options about how you usually get to work? And it starts to make you think, he does a lot more than just that, but he'll get you thinking about, about transportation at the personal level and the regional level. And then um, I'm really pleased, I'm a graduate of U of O, as I mentioned, and John Reynolds and Ehab Elziati are two professors. John Reynolds is a professor emeritus from U of O, and they're both coming in um, December for the class on, on um, site responsive design and passive solar heating and passive cooling and daylighting and, and actually some on indoor electric uses. But John Reynolds is, is nationally and internationally known for his solar research. Um, he's on the board of Energy Trust of Oregon. He's on the board of ASES, the, the um, American Society of, no, American Solar Engineering Society. Um, long time organization in the solar world and, and JR is great. He's just got decades of experience and he, he knows how to explain this stuff because he's been working with it for so long. So he's coming in December and Ehab El Ziadi is a, a native of Egypt. So he's coming from a very different place culturally and, and climatically. But his background, he's an architect and an engineer. And actually what I like about Ehab is he's skeptical. And it's good to have a skeptic in the room, room because they're gonna ask questions and they, that's what he does is he, he does research on green projects and their performance their energy performance, he's now looking at schools and looking at not just are they good energy in the terms of energy performance, but how, are, how about how are stu students learning? So it's a fun group and, and Rich Prill is another one that's coming out of uh, Spokane and will look at um, indoor environmental quality. So regional guest instructors, I should change that to also say local expert instructors. So I'll use Ken and Sharon's network and some networking on my own. And w each topic area will be taught by experts in the field. And it'll end up being resources for you, these connections. So we have the guest pre pre presentations and then class discussion, which naturally occurs. And a, th a third element, which is pretty big, is the team projects. And those are generated by ideas from the people that are in the class. So you might be working on a project, you might have, be, have finished a project but it seems like it would still apply or you have an idea for a project. It's great if it's something that's really on the ground, um, something that you can actually take your team and go look at. But it doesn't need to be a building. We've had, uh, when Kim ran the class, we had a group that, a team that said, you know, we've got some great residential projects in Bend, what if we did a survey and made this list so people who wanted to go see great green homes in Bend could go and find them. Well, that's a very big task, and they actually narrowed it down to a handful of homes, and they did case studies, interviewed the, the homeowners and the designers and the builders, and put together a book of great green homes in Bend. Another project, um, two years ago, I had a brother and sister take the class, and they formed a contracting business. They were thinking about this as they were taking the class and by the end they had pretty much settled on it, but their team project was to put the parameters for what a really green 
construction company would look like. So it was very personal to the two of them because they were already thinking of doing this. And that, I'm talking too much, obviously. <laughs> um, that became their team project. So it's, it's the ideas for the team projects come from the people enrolled in the class, your ideas, and you'll, you'll introduce them to the other people in the class. Everybody gives me their preferences, and from that, the teams are assigned. So you work on your team project throughout the year. And then lots of field trips, because I don't think you can learn this stuff without seeing it. It's not, you, you got to walk into a building and see how it works, see the daylighting. Go see that mechanical system so you understand how much space it takes. So we'll do a lot of field trips. They'll be all local. You've got some great projects here. This is a great quote from Stephanie. She, um, she works for a solar installer in Bend. And uh, fantastic forum for fostering respect for your colleagues' expertise, as well as recognizing the expertise that exists within your local community. Stephanie is one of these kind of people that she networks. She just does it naturally. And to have her feel like that the class was enhancing her network that was pretty profound to me. I mentioned this a little bit, dynamic modes of learning. So you've got reading assignments, and there's a, it's not really a textbook, but it's a binder. There's two copies at the back of the room. You should take a look at that. That's the actual curriculum. That's you working on your own time. And there's a couple of papers that you need to write. Then there's the aspect of it that's interactive where you can ask questions of the, the experts that are in the room with you. And then collaborative with your team project. And then experiential, going out and actually see pro seeing projects and seeing how they work. The, the collaborative aspect, um, it's an interesting thing. It's part of how you learn how to articulate green. Because it's just you and your teammates. And, and you can practice on them. You will present your project to the whole class at the very end. But the team project, it's a, it's a good learning method, working with other people. So who takes the class? We've had all kinds. It's typically a lot of designers, architects and designers, um, contractors. I had a, one year where I had three civil engineers. It was great, because they have a different view of things. Facilities managers, we had a school facility manager take the class two years ago. As I mentioned, contractors, project managers. It also works for people that aren't in the field of green and building, but they think that it might work for them. Because through the course, you're going to be seeing all these different professions, whether it's interiors and selecting green materials, or is it the policy side of things? And you're gonna, you, you've got a legal background and you want to be doing advocacy. Or is it commissioning and energy modeling? So the course really applies to a lot of different fields. And I would say, particularly now, people looking for a new career in green. It fits. Emily is an example of that. Our local um, affiliate, Habitat affiliate in Bend, is actually, we now have three people that have gone through the class <laughs> that, that are involved with the Bend Area Habitat. And they, um, they're now doing amazingly energy efficient houses. It's, it's really a joy to see that. And part of it comes from the people who are taking the class or bringing that information back to, to how the houses are designed, how they're constructed. They, know, they have now have access to some of the Tax the tax credits and, and incentives that are available. It's a great little network happening there around that. But it was fun to have someone who doesn't have a background in, in construction who's able to get it. Yes, they're going to be experts. They're going to be talking about terms you may not be familiar with. But because their knowledge is so great, they can explain stuff to you even if you don't have a background in it. This is a tough one. So what is the value of becoming a certified sustainable building advisor? I think those are the major things about it, but there is a lot more to it. There's the connections that you're going to make with the people 
in, in this region. I would say the, the strongest is that experience in the language of green, that, that ability to now talk about it, either whether you're needing to, let's say you're at a, a meeting and you've got a mechanical engineer and they're starting to talk about this heating degree days and the chiller and the, you know, all these words that you may not be familiar with. Well, you don't have to understand everything they're saying, but if you have an understanding of the kind of questions to ask them, then you can participate in that conversation and you can make it have an impact. And then it goes the other way. You'll have a knowledge base, you'll be articulate in it, you'll understand the vocabulary, and you can explain it to people who don't understand it. They understand some aspect of construction maybe, or they're a potential client and you're needing to convince them of something. So you'll, you will be more fluent in the language of green. It is a national program and it's fun that Kim's here because she's on the board of the national program. So if you have more specific questions about, about it, be sure to ask her. This is a great website reference. The, it's just Google National Sustainable Building Advisor and you'll get it or NASBAP. There's resources on there. And I mentioned they're all over the country. And we want to thank our, our sponsors, we, which was already earlier mentioned, but Idaho Power and, and the lab here. And this is fun. If you're a lead AP, do we have any lead APs in the room? Great. The um, credentialing, as you probably have heard, is changing. If it's probably, I, I think there's probably not anybody who's yet taken it under the new system. But the, you'll have continuing ed requirements now within the next two years, and six hours need to be lead specific, but um, I believe it's 24, de or depends on whether your green associate are gonna go for the lead AP, but this class will qualify, this course will qualify. If you're an architect or other professional organization with CEUs, and the, U Canada and U.S. Green Building Councils have endorsed it as a, at the 400 level, mastery level course. So you don't need to take my word for it that it's a sound uh, curriculum. There's a lot of different organizations that have looked at it, looked at it very seriously and said, yeah, this is a good curriculum. Again, David was a, another person who's been in the field for a long time, and um, I, I love that when someone who's been doing this and they got a good, pretty good, solid background in green, and yet they come away with feeling like they it opened their eyes too. So details: we do have the schedule at the back of the room, and it's also on the website, on Sharon's website. We're starting in October. We meet once a month. So we're gonna meet Friday evenings and all day Saturday. So you, sh you, know, you should be able to work it out with your, your work schedule. What is, what is all day Saturday? Nine to five, yeah, yeah. Once a month, so it's only nine Saturdays. And I'm gonna, we are limiting the class to 24. And what I've seen over in Bend, the, cl the largest class we've had is 29. Once you get beyond that, there's, you lose that ability to have that interaction with your, your peers. So we're sticking to 24. You're gonna, it's, it's a good size, good size for going on field trips. It's a good size for your team projects. You'll have four or five people on a team and those class discussions. Study reflection. Right. <laughs> Good question. There, there's required reading, um, and there's a couple of papers. There's actually three one-page papers, and then four longer papers. Longer being three to five pages, but that's spread out over the months. And so you're doing your papers. Your papers can tie directly into your team project. So. You got an energy, a paper specifically on energy that's due. Energy is one of the topics that your team project needs to address. 
you can write your paper as part of your team project. You don't have to. If you had a different topic and it didn't seem to apply, you could go ahead and do that. But I know a lot of us don't write papers on a regular basis anymore. The sun's in my eye. Um, and that's part of why it's set up. The first three papers are just one page thought pieces. It's gonna get you back into the practice of that. And then the four longer papers are each on a specific topic, energy, indoor environmental quality, water, and green materials. So you take a specific topic after it's been presented and then do your paper. Uh, and then you need to meet with your team and do your team project. So it varies how much time it is outside of class, and it varies per person. I'd say, I don't know, six to eight hours a month? What do you think, Kim? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, I will say that the people that spend, that you get what you get out of it. You truly do, like many things, but in this case, it's very true. Um, it, you're going to be, as you probe into something and you delve into it and you present it to your team and you get feedback from them, you'll get more out of it. That's true. But I also recognize life happens. I remember sending Kim a paper, and I, in my email I said, this is the worst thing I've ever written, it's just an outline, sorry. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you're going to have a, a, a month where you don't have an extra minute. I get it, I know that. I still need you to turn something in. Don't blow it off completely. But um, I recognize that there's going to be ebb and flow in your ability to meet the class requirements. The main thing is being here. That's, you're gonna get a lot out of being here and there's nothing that replaces that. Being in the classroom, you're, you're having, you have that interaction with the guest instructors. You can miss two class sessions and still be considered as having completed the course. And the national certification exam, you cannot take the exam unless you successfully complete the class. So your attendance, the papers, I don't grade them, I just acknowledge that you've written them and, and being involved with your team project. That, that means, yeah, go ahead. So do you video the classes that you do? We haven't, this is the first time we've done this. I mean the class that we you be taking to do it? Because I, I noticed your opening night, I'm out of town. And then I'm, and, I, and then I know I'm out of country, I'm one of these other things. Well, we should talk about what you could do to make up a class. Because I wouldn't want this schedule to just, you know, make it impossible. And we, we've just, like, slightly talked about the possibility of videotaping it. It's a long thing to videotape. I will say that the, the PowerPoints, the presenters generally bring a PowerPoint, and those will be made available. Although, if you've ever looked at a PowerPoint after the fact, <laughs> it's really hard. Um, another thing would be that you might be able to attend, as I said, attend a class in another part of the country, you know, get up to Seattle or over to Portland. I mean, it's possible, depending on their schedule and your schedule. With that, you have to be there for the Thursday and the Saturday class, if you miss. Is it a Thursday and a Saturday? Friday, Friday Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's just something you should just talk to me and let's look at your schedule. Is everybody on the same schedule? Though? No. No, like I'm running the class in Ben and I'm running the class here. Uh, so I've got it staggered. Yeah, you so could come over to Ben. Me, it wouldn't help me if I'm not in Boise on October 23rd to be in Reno on October 23rd to take it there. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it would be more like come to Bend October 15th if you can't be in Boise on the 23rd. And there's a, there, you know, we ought to just talk about it and see what, what we can do. Yeah, because I wouldn't want that to be the only reason you weren't here. Yeah? Does the course delve into um, existing buildings at all or retrofits? Or yes, thank you. I, I need to update the PowerPoint and, and include that because I had that question last time. <laughs> um, yeah, those are, and that's going to be a, a greater and greater issue as we move forward in terms of you know, the next several years in, in our economy because we've got a lot of buildings and they're really not doing well and we need to know how to take care of them. 
So yes, it does talk about existing buildings. And uh, there's a nice balance between commercial and residential, too, in the program. If I see that the makeup of the class has a, a, a particular interest, then I will communicate that to the guest instructors. And they, they'll start to shift, they will shift their presentations to meet the needs of the people in the class. Yeah. Because you can have your team project focus on your interest as well. Right, right. Kim just mentioned you can have your team project focus on, on what your particular area of interest is. I've seen that a lot, actually. And it's interesting because of the, of the dynamics. There might be one person who's just like passionate about green materials and, and they influence the other people in their group, but in a very positive way. So it's a good, yeah, yeah, a lot of ways for that to work. Yeah. There's something on the slides there, I'm, maybe I didn't get quite right, but the, uh, about training people, it sounded like to actually, actually do the work. Is that something that was up on the slides? I was also interested in this as okay. an economic development. Oh, Peace. okay, no, I didn't address that, but I can certainly talk about that. Yes, it's very interesting how, in fact, I had someone at the info session I gave in Bend two weeks ago uh, who's not taken the class, but he was attending the info session, and he said, God, it sounds like that this course really attracts entrepreneurs, and I think that, that there's something to that, but I also think that the 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 nature of the class, it's like an incubator, because I, I'm gonna protect this group of people. The, the 24 people that take the class, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let somebody dominate, I'm not gonna let someone interrupt, I'm not gonna in, let someone else in the class come just sit in on one presentation. I'm pretty <laughs> bulldog about it, because I really care about you guys having that experience and having that that comfort with each other. So as a place to develop ideas, definitely. Is that what you were getting at? Or more? Kind of, uh, well, well, I was approached today by a person who works for one of the refugee agencies here in Washington. Simply, she was just asking about training in the green technologies for, I'm thinking that she, she's thinking about installers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and I thought, wow, what a really great thing. And there's other organizations here too yes. that are talking about doing that. So it kind of, it goes a little farther down from the conceptual it, yeah, idea it, stuff. Ex exactly, and, and that's another thing that I personally need to be aware of. I tend to think at the conceptual level, and I don't address the, 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 the guts side of things, the real down-to-earth stuff. Uh, but the course does. You're going to have someone in the class, you're going to have presenters who are going to tell you the detail stuff about how buildings go together and how to make them work really well. But to answer your question, this class isn't set up to train people to do a specific task, but it would be excellent for people that want to develop a training program. In fact, I've got someone registered for the class in Bend there's an organization called Heart of Oregon, and they take troubled youth, kids that have basically fallen out of the system but want to change their lives, and the, in the past what they've been doing is taking, teaching them forestry skills. And they're starting a construction program at Heart of Oregon. So the person who's heading up that is taking the class. So he's gonna have a background in construction, he works with troubled youth, and he's going to teach them sustainability skills. That's where the class fits for him. So that would be perfect. Another yeah. good example of that, Jamel, and um, fortunately we had someone from the Oregon Building Congress, and they work with high, school, high schools and community colleges that took the program to help them develop programs. Right, so. right. And I've seen that with the, the Bend Habitat affiliate, where the first person who took the class was their construction manager, and now he is involved with regionally, Washington and Oregon region, Habitat affiliates, and, and having them come and learn basic green building techniques that, for, that are specifically work well for Habitat. Yeah. Other, yeah. Um, 
I don't mean to necessarily be skeptical, but like you said initially, that you know it's a big commitment for people, both time and money for some. I mean, I mean especially students. Right. And I guess I just want to address, you know, especially being that this is the first time this will happen in Boise. What kind of? I mean, is the curriculum pretty strict and very outlined to where the different instructors that come in are they going to be giving you the same? quality of education that's been going on for you know, three years or however long it's been, and, and are they trained in any way, or that's a good, that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'll answer, there's a couple of things that came to mind with what you're asking. One is, <clears throat> there is an established curriculum, and there's two copies of it back there, and you get that as well, so you will have the curriculum. I send the specific unit to the guest instructor. I email it to them. But I also, in my email, I say, the students have this. I want to hear, I want you to see what they're going to be looking at, use it as a guide, but I want you to tell your story. I want you to tell, your, tell about the case studies that, where you learn the most from it and where, where you, basically, I want them to talk about their passion. <laughs> so as far as getting people that are good presenters, I have had one presenter in my two years of running it, I'm now starting on my third, that I was like, I'm sitting there and I'm cringing. And yet, when he got done, people were asking him questions and he could answer them. He just wasn't particularly good at presenting and he, was only gonna, he only had him scheduled for an hour and a half. So out of nine, 12 hour weekends, there was one hour and a half that was like, not so good. But mostly, um, most of these people are, are very good at presenting. Like the ones that are from a university or from a school setting, they're, they're incredibly good. And more and more in most fields, people have to present all the time. So I'm getting the people that are doing that. Is that kind of what you're asking? Are they going to be pretty good at it? Well, yeah, just, I mean, the fact that you said you, you, there is a pretty rigid curriculum and you send that out and, and they're basically held accountable that we know what that curriculum is expected. And, and right. Okay. Right. But what's, what's kind of fun that'll happen is that um, you'll have a presenter come, say, in December, and then in February someone's presenting and they happen to address a similar topic or an aspect of it, and they're saying something different. <laughs> Well, you get to challenge them and say, wait a minute, John Reynolds in December said this, and now you're saying that. And you can get some very, very lively discussions going on. Yeah. I'm just noticing it's after 6.30, and we scheduled this to end at 6.30. So if anybody needs to leave, please you know, feel free to go ahead. And um, I'll be around to answer questions. So exactly that, what's their transportation systems? He already knows some stuff. He knows about smart growth, that's hap what's happening over here. And we'll put together a transportation panel. That's our idea now for the class, is have a panel discussion. Well, the panel is going to be the local people here with Peter running the panel and asking them questions, which we will send to them ahead of time. So he'll, they'll, they'll exactly, there'll be a good conversation about it. Yeah. They, you know, think of it from their perspective. They want to do a good job. They want to tell you what stuff you want to know. <laughs> so, and they're, it's amazing. If you, get, if you start asking anybody about something they really care about, it doesn't matter if the technology is falling apart and, and they, their voice sounds squeaky or horrible. When they're passionate about it, it comes across. And that's what I've found that they really are amazingly good presenters. So, 
other questions? Well, I'll be around, Sharon's around, and, and Kim as well, so feel free to ask us questions on, directly. Thanks.